All right, welcome back to the In The Blues Tone podcast. This is the second in-house one with my friend Dave. Dave K, I'll just leave Good it at evening. that. How are you, mate? Good. Good. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. And for the long-term subscribers as well, you might remember Dave from not only the little sort of rig gear rundown documentary we did a while back at your place, which was some of the best stuff I've ever seen anywhere in the world. <laughs> and I've been to a lot of places, Thanks. mate. So Thanks. your uh, collection is insane. And you also, the other reason I wanted to have you in here today is I know we, we've both run Jam Nights, which is the other side of the coin from being just a, a musician at one, which we spoke about with Rick and Ryan on the last podcast. So I thought we'd have a chat about that as well. But yeah, your gear collection is insanely great and you've got a lot of really great vintage amps. And I know we've spoken about some of that on the on the last video, but I think some of the questions a lot of people always have is, how great or what's the major difference between like a vintage amp and like a modern reissue and I know you own like a 65, 64 original uh, deluxe 65. reverb. 65. 65 deluxe yeah, reverb. Yeah, yeah. And you've also got the reissue. So I thought maybe we could start there. Tell us a little bit about, you know, how you actually found that amp to start with in Australia and then maybe just some comparisons in terms of what you think about both. I'd go through, go to a music shop, and I think I was looking at a sixty-one three-three-five, and plug it into a into the DR. Oh, look, I was kind of eyeing off DRs anyway, so they happened to have one. Mm-hmm. Plonked it in there, and it just sounded like crap. He said, "Oh, look, the speaker's gone." So he plugged an external speaker into it, and it just sounded magic. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a sixty-one three-three-five, and a sixty-five DR. Um, I, I fell in love with both, <laughs> but three three five had to wait. I wish I'd picked that up as well, but it was wow. a bit 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 steep. I, I never saw another one like that again. Um, a lot of three three fives have chunky necks. So I, I don't like chunky necks. This had a nice thin neck, beautiful. Yeah, that's where but we that's, that's where we're uh, separated. I like yeah. the big necks. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they don't like them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, fair, so enough, fair enough. Yeah. So I thought, okay, look, I'll, I'll grab the sixty five. Grabbed it with a different speaker mm-hmm. and kind of use a few times but tended to use a reissue for gigs and things like that. But then every time I compared the two, there was just no comparison. The, the, the real thing was just, it just sounded better. Yeah. Now, is that psychological <laughs> or did it really sound better? I don't know. Now, I remember last, officially, might have been a few months back, Brought it up, and uh, Ryan had it had a play through it, and he I'm too. pretty sure kind of he said, "Oh, geez, this one sounds much better," and that was a 65 rather yeah. than the reissue. Now a lot of those old amps, the the tolerances varied so much too. So that's, I guess some of them were not hit and miss, but they were they could sound very different to each other. I guess for people who don't know that the, what that means is that like the parts weren't maybe made as efficiently as they are now, or as close to the spec, like a 250K pot might have been 210 or 290. You know, you never knew back in the day. So um, so it was potluck, pun intended. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so in terms of like, uh, is it just something about, what is it about the sound that you think just sort of jumps out more? Is it, is it a louder amplifier as well or is it volume-wise pretty comparable? Oh, volume-wise pretty comparable. It's yeah. just the sound that it, it's – kind of grow up hearing that sound and then you hear it yeah. and it's just closer to to the real sound yeah. that you expect. Your your stuff's in such great condition as well. Like did you – was it is it just luck when you find some stuff that's old? Because you've got – I mean, for people who don't know, who haven't seen the first video that we did together, I'll leave a link up on the cards if you're uh, watching on YouTube, but you've got probably – I'm guessing 30 vintage or 30 amps from Fender almost or something like that. Is that right? Or 30 amps in total? It's crazy. I'd have to consult my database people. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, you got so many great ones and they're all like in just great condition as well. You've got such great Uh, stuff. Maybe with the exception of one or two. That's probably also not accidental. Um, I've kind of always tended to just like stuff that's been looked after. Yeah. And I'll, I'll look, to, look after all my equipment really well. I mean, I, I can't stand, I, I can't stand seeing people burning a guitar and breaking a guitar. 
Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's just, just, I'll get shivers up my spine. <laughs> <laughs> I got to uh, yeah. tell everybody something funny too. Anytime I have my guitar and it's like neck <laughs> uh, just resting against the amp, Dave always spins it around <laughs> just I, in case. I can't stand that either. I, I could just see, I I do could it just just see it around that edge slipping off and the whole thing falling yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. So what a, I know we covered this in the in the last video, but there's probably 50,000 more subscribers on the channel since then too. So what are some of the, like, I guess some of the, the best amps you've got or in terms of what you like the sound of the most or maybe some of the most collectible as well? I never kind of looked at looked at in terms of what was most collectible. Probably in terms of preference, my yeah. favourite is a Tremolux. Yeah, cool. The 15-inch. Just such a nice, mellow-sounding amp. Uh, I think it's a 58. <clears throat> um, just a really, really nice-sounding amp. Um, and then the DR comes close. Ah, oh, look, the Deluxe is also nice as well. Tweed Deluxe. Uh, but but a lot of those things really aren't really usable. No. So they're the, like, are they the five watt amps? The no, no, oh, the Deluxe is 14 ish. 14, okay. Give or take. Because you've got a couple of you champs. You've got champs. Too. Yeah, 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 little champs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look, the little champs are great and vibra champs and just, just beautiful little things. Yeah. Um, but again, would you use them? <laughs> nah, probably, probably not. Just Probably just for a jam. Yeah, that's it. Um, I actually got a five watt amp recently from Joyo. It's a basically a clone of one of those. It'd be an interesting A B test to see, you know, how how a sort of inexpensive Chinese brand matches against like a what is it, a nineteen sixties as well or is it older than that? It's the age of fifty nine. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think sixties as well, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, if you want to do a comparison, yep. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> but one thing I never try is putting those through a bigger speaker cabinet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you know that little cigarette Box amp. That was yeah. That was Dave's actually. I did a video <coughs> um, on that. That was I, awesome. I plugged that into a larger cabinet. Yeah. And I could not believe how loud that thing was. What Half a watt. I think I plugged and it into my Marshall box, and I, I was like, "This is awesome." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people talk about could you play through the amp with a drummer? Well, look, I, I reckon with a four ten or four twelve cabinet, that little thing. Yeah, look, it'd work with a with a reasonable drummer that had some. Yeah. Self control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right because yeah. I don't know how they get those little things. So for those who don't know what it is, it's literally a cigarette packet that's got an amplifier and a speaker built into it that's powered by a is a nine volt battery from memory. Nine volt battery, yeah. And you yeah. still had the original battery in there like twenty years later. Or yeah, oh, it still worked. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Thank God it didn't leak. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, oh. he told me to um, cut it and like. Check the battery or something. So I did that and I, I opened it up and the battery was still a charge. I couldn't believe still okay. it. Still okay. Yeah. So yeah. that was loud through the 2 by 12 box, uh, which is just Celestian 7080 speakers I've got yeah. in there. I, I was pretty impressed. i got to tell you, though, that, that onboard <laughs> speaker left a little uh, to be desired, but yeah, I wasn't expecting qual too much Qualitatively challenged. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was actually one of the most fun videos I did last year. It took me, yeah. I think um, – I had it for ages. I apologise for that. <laughs> I must have had that for about nine weeks. I said, yeah, I'll get no, it back no, to you in like good. two weeks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was awesome. So you've also got like other amps other than Fenders too, which you don't, well, I don't see too much of these days. Have you gone off the other amp brands pretty much playing when you play live? Because Dave plays guitar live. He plays bass as well. He's been in my band. Um, we've done jams and all kinds of stuff. So I usually just see you with the Supersonic these days. That's about it. All the deluxe. Supersonic. The thing I like about that one is it's got a nice clean clean sound, yeah. pretty well like a deluxe reverb, and it's got onboard dirt. So especially for things like jams, plug and pray. I mean plug and play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good topic for later. No, no. Which, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. Good introduction. <laughs> Thanks for watching the In The Blues podcast. Subscribe for more episodes.